here for you. 100%. So thank you for allowing me to come and just share a couple minutes with you. I just wanted to share, yes, I am a native Central Floridian. I was born in Sanford, grew up in Oviedo, and uh, followed the Great Migration north to Rochester. But I returned home in 02 after service in the Corps. And in 2010, the Army appointed me an Army Reserve Ambassador. And then the Secretary appointed me the civilian aide to the Secretary for our region. And what does that mean? It means I get to continue to serve just like each and every single one of you. Whether it be a Gold Star family or a Marine brother or a sailor, airman or Coast Guardsman, each and every single one of us put lives on the line and did not think it selfless or selfish to be able to go out, raise our right hand, swear an oath of office, and serve this great nation. As I look about this audience, I see a true reflection of what America is all about. We're young. I like to say we're tenured rather than old. Uh, but I'm here to tell you with two titanium knees, a patched up shoulder, and a rebuilt ankle, I continue to serve. And I serve because of each and every single one of you. And what you're doing here today to serve this veteran and show love for our, our brother is just incredible. So when Dee called me and said, hey, would you stand in? I say, I consider it an honor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. An honor. Uh, I get to travel a lot and speak on the Secretary's behalf, but for you, our great nation is, is, is safe today because of young men and women that still are taking that oath of office and serving on the front lines. Whether that's Navy SEAL, Army Ranger, Marine Recon, Air Force paratroopers, Coast Guardsmen that serve in harm's way each and every day and night, our nation is well guarded because of young people that turn into veterans. And I'd be remiss if I didn't show a little fatherly pride because carrying on in my footprints right now, I got a young sergeant in the Army flying drones. And the great thing is I got a 27-year-old getting ready to follow the younger brother into the Army to fly drones. Uh, he leaves within 30 days. And why, why do I tell you that story? Because as a Marine Corps dad, I used to tell him that joystick you're messing with ain't gonna never do anything for you. <laughs> that joystick now guards our nation's skies and is the eyes above the troops on the ground. And I think my son gets it right. He says, Dad, if I do my job and I do it well, I take care of soldiers each and every day. Good job. To my Marine brothers, sisters, you know, I know you're saying, okay, how does the Marine end up in the Army? Well, that's a three-star conversation we'll have later. <laughs> but I don't want to be before you long, but I wanted to come and bring on behalf of the Secretary, Dr. Mark Esper, from the Pentagon from one of my mentors in this, Wallace Shadokati, who is the Castle Emeritus, now serving in his 33rd year as a civilian aide to the Secretary. We are civilians who have served and may not have served that go out here and make sure that the work that each and every one of our Veteran Services Organization does every day is not missed back at Capitol Hill. Secondly, we go out and make sure that the young men and women who are making a decision about what they want to do in life, that they can continue to consider the military. My beloved Marine Corps, I had to put that out there. I know what he's going to give me. The Marine Corps, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. And that they don't consider it taking anything away when they step up and step out and show up on the front lines to guard this great country. So sir, I salute you and let you know that a band of brothers never leaves a Marine behind and will never leave you behind. I've got another brother right now that I was talking to this morning, Carl Campbell. We served in the Marine Corps as cryptologic linguists and technicians and he's battling cancer. And this morning he said, Al, the pain is so hard, it's so tough. I said, brother, you're a Marine 
and there ain't nothing we can't overcome. But the thing that makes us stand firm and be able to do what we do is each and every single one of you. When somebody walks up and thanks me for my service, I finally figured out what to say. You were worth it. So to all of you, to my Marine Corps brother, on behalf of the Secretary, thank you for allowing me to come and share a few moments. And I just charge that it not just be something like this that continues to unite this nation, our veterans, that we just continue to lock arms each and every day and continue to defend this United States of America. God bless you.